Thank you to the supporting follower up there. <laughs> Hello and welcome or welcome back. I am James Giffins. And I am Malcolm Childs and we are Just Making Conversation. Where we will discuss the ups and downs of the model making hobby that brings us a sheer joy and utter despair in equal measures. From sticky backed plastic to toilet tissue and everything in between, we are going to be Just Making Conversation. Remember there are other podcasts that you could listen to. Plastic Model Mojo. The Scale Model Podcast. Plastic Posse Podcast. On the Bench. Model Geeks. The Sprue Cutters Union. Model by Garpoden. Small Subjects. Built Sideways. And the Micro Machines Podcast. Head to modelpodcasts.com for all of the links. If you've enjoyed or even misclicked on this podcast, consider leaving a review or five stars as it promotes the podcast to more people to enjoy. Showing your support to us is as easy as just making a coffee. So why not go over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash JMC podcast and do that. Your support will help us um, go towards making this podcast and the content fit for human consumption. Mm, possibly. In this episode, right here, that you are currently listening to, we will be just making conversation for fun, talking about why we have been in a traffic jam for so many weeks and unable to get to record. But we feel that even though we've no guest or topic, this is always a great time to crack open the hobnobs, slurp on your coffee, and just make some conversation. <laughs> why worry? After all, there is in fact so much to catch up on. The tarp build our workbench, Telford plans, and wait for it, the Musaru Cup. Are we going to do a new a new jingle for the Musaru Cup? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've given that a lot of consideration, and uh, I mm. think it's uh, no. I, I, the reason I, he, I I said no was more the fact of, it, oh, I don't know how we're going to do that. Okay. It's the Moose Roo Cup. I stick some reverb oh, on it, and yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> so it's, oh. it's nothing clever, honestly. Oh, I'm disappointed now. <laughs> Actually, it takes years of training. Uh -huh. mm. I had to go up and down a mountain with like a load of water on my back over and over again, day after day, day after day, and they still wouldn't train me on how to make good jingles. Did, did they sit down and make you wire a plug within 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Um, I had to try and eat a bowl of rice using a pin. Uh. And there was this uh, sensei with a big long beard who hated me. And I had to keep on doing all these different tasks. And eventually they would eventually train me and how to make the best jingles ever. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't pass. <laughs> They, and then they closed down after that. And, uh... Yeah, guy died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sad. Anyway, did we get some emails? Oh, we did, yes. Would you like me to read the second one and read the first one? Yes, I could do that. So we had a message from Simon, and he basically said, keep up, uh, JMC podcast. Um, it can never be too off a tangent for me. Kind regards, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Mm. I think that was in I think that was in response to a message you said, uh, you know, apologies for being off tangent again. Yeah, that was something we said in the podcast. We keep going off on tangents, don't we? I don't think we've been on tangent, to be honest. Don't do fruit. <laughs> okay. And we also received a, a short email from Simon, who is part of Barbarossa Models. He says, I often listen to you guys on the podcast in the car on the way to and from work and often plan on writing in. So after listening to your most recent episode about YouTube and videos and the fine advice James was talking about in regards to cameras, editing, content, etc. I thought I'd send in a comment. I began my YouTube channel almost seven years ago on a suggestion of my sister, 
who said people might be interested in watching some of my work. I've only ever uploaded to the Armorama forum website way back in the day, and wasn't really convinced it'd be worth the effort, and nobody would be interested in watching, especially as I had no proper technical equipment. But just simply using an iPad for literally everything from start to finish, I began with a new diorama project. And to be honest, I really enjoyed the process. From the filming, thinking about the content, historical photos for reference, and all the editing, etc., and actually felt like I'd raised my standard of modelling a little as people would be watching all the details. And so I'd make a little more effort with my work than before. Views, subscriptions and comments, as I'd expected, were very slow for a new channel. With YouTube's algorithm, it seems, success breeds success. But I was still really happy with the video. And the series of videos progressed, and then so did the views and the comments. 99.9% .9 of which were very positive. And since those early days, the channel has grown quite nicely, with over 10,000 subscribers. But for me, it's not just about that. It's the enjoyment I get from making the videos, which is almost as much as making the models themselves. There are so many great modelling YouTube creators out there, and all sorts of formats, such as talking directly to camera, streaming live, or like me, breaking each complete video down into dozens of segments and taking a bit more time with the editing. James had some great tips and advice on computer editing equipment, microphones, and cameras. They were available, which can obviously vary in price to suit all budgets, but for me, I still use that iPad for everything. Using iMovie for all the editing, which I find a little imagination and free photo apps, is 100% suitable for what I need. I find the beauty of that is that everything on this one device, just moving video clips and photos straight over into the iPad's editing app, the only extras I do have, a tripod stand and a ring light, which are both relatively cheap. I definitely recommend to anyone about thinking of trying out YouTube to give it a go. You don't need to be constantly uploading videos. I only make about five or six a year, but frequent uploads, I think, are certainly good for the YouTube algorithm. You definitely don't have to be a video or technological genius to get started, and it's another way of getting involved with the modeling community. Anyway, well done on a great podcast. Really enjoy listening when a new episode comes up. All the best, Simon from Barbarossa Models. Thank you very much, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, I, he's one of the people I do watch, so very good. Consistency. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's all it's about, really, isn't it? It's about just doing what you love and sharing the passion um, and not worrying about it. Mm. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. because quite often I've always find with the YouTube as well, some of the videos that I've uploaded years ago, I still get comments on. I still get people saying, oh, did you know, etc., etc." I think it was last week. I had a comment on the, the comparison of I did of B17 of an old kit and a new new release. And there's, it, uh, there's loads of comments in there, but two of the comments in there stuck out to me. One was talking about panel lines. Mm. And the fact that that's what they were designed for. They weren't designed for you to make the model and leave them. They were designed for you to sand them down. Yeah, I think you talked about that already. Yeah, I've talked about it before. And um, and, and like I say, the, the other week I had a comment about um, some history, a history uh, lesson in B-17s, which was quite useful, quite interesting, talking about the engines and stuff. So, yeah, it's worth doing um, if you've got the time and trouble. Um, and it's, it's a good part of your hobby. Well, it's an, almost another hobby, isn't it? It is in itself, yeah. Thank you very much for taking the time to write to us. That's, that's, it was really nice. So when you talk about traffic jams, then you're not talking about actual traffic jams. You know, basically, I just uh, work's been really, really busy. Uh, people being sick, uh, going all the, all that sort of stuff, because I cover them. So it's been very nice because I've had work, um, but obviously I've had to do a little bit of overtime. Well, I didn't have to. Um, they didn't put me in a room and lock me in there, but um, well, that felt like it. But um, yeah, so I've been doing lots of overtime and busy working around and doing lots of bits and pieces. So mm. I mean, it makes it difficult to find time to record these things. Isn't it? Yeah, to be honest, that's the that is the the bigger problem is that when I'm available, you're not available, or uh, you've got no voice, or you know. Mm -hmm. Or I'm being dragged out in the garden to move comp compost, or or you've got no internet. Tamed. Uh, yeah, my internet's been playing up of late as well, which hasn't helped. 
so yeah, it, there's there's loads of loads of loads of different reasons. Although we're not making excuses, you know, it is what it is. Well, we're not making excuses, but we're not making apologies either, because this is life. Because because at the end of the day, although I'm, I'm sure you've all been sat there unable to do anything else other than wait for the, this podcast. <laughs> How have you coped? <laughs> yeah, we do it for a hobby, so it's it, sometimes these things happen. We have actually, in fairness to ourselves, we have arranged interviews that have had to be cancelled. Uh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. We had a, an interview lined up that, that I, my internet crashed, so that got cancelled. Then we had a another interview with a different person all set up, and then that got cancelled for double booking in diaries and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So a multitude of um, bits and pieces that have happened that have, have prevented us to doing it. Really, are we able to talk about who we've got lined up? Is that it's common common to be kind of uh, cagey about what we're up to and stuff but i don't know why oh well i don't know I, I, they've not accepted our invite to come back yet so <laughs> that, that, that's true basically we, we were covering a subject that we haven't tackled before which was uh, floaty things and uh, i'm not going to say anything more than that yeah it would be that would be an interesting interview and then we were going to go back to a, a previous episode where we didn't have the full monty with us um, but we, we managed to pull them out of their very busy schedule to come and talk to us. We had the Morecambe, but we didn't have the Wise. No, in- indeed. We had the Hardy. <laughs> no Laurel. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had the Dick, but no Spotted. <laughs> we had Sid, but didn't have Babs. Who's Sid and Babs? Carry on. Come uh, on. Sorry. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about your, your bench, though? What's What's going on there? So, um, I'm glad you've gone to the bench because um, that's quite exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> Last we left you, you were doing about 25 C47s. Yes, yeah, so the C47s are all finished. The Wacos have, have glided off with the horses towed behind. Um, and they are all now sitting on a runway in a, on a display in uh, Welford Museum, mm. which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um they look quite nice, actually, didn't they? they? Do. I did you see, I, I think you saw the I picture. Did. Yes, uh, quite interesting. And um, if you're able yeah, to, I've, would you better pop a picture up on? Uh... Yes, I've I've got the picture actually. It's a good point. I will put that in the uh, in the the box of delights for you. Yeah, so that the bench was cleared mm-hmm. uh, for with uh, all the C forty sevens, etc., etc., and the wonderful um, masks and all that sort of stuff. That's all been put away, um, and I've. Busy been preparing actually um, models for testing. So not I'm not testing models. So no no manufacturer has contacted me and said, "Can you test these models?" Uh-huh. Um, but I've, I've I've created some paint mules because I want to test some paints. Mm. I have done a deal with Outlaw Paints for my little internet shop that I run called Sprubox.co.uk. So yeah, so I'm going to be the the UK distributor of. Um, outlaw paints which is super exciting that is exciting and i've i've got some paints here and i'm going to do some testing i'm going to do some videoing to to show the product off basically a couple of weeks ago i talked to um moles about these outlaw paints Mm -hmm. yeah i've never seen someone so excited i mean moles is quite an excitable chap anyway but he was beside himself with how how happy he was with these paints basically yeah so the, the samples come from australia after a lot of um to and fro in and um, um, fapping about. And amongst that was, um, as you know, we did the 48-hour build um, where um, Outlaw Paints was one of the sponsors, etc. And Moss was lucky enough to get a whole bundle of paints mm. that was offered to him for free. So they arrived, I sent them off to Moss, and then I arranged a date with Moss on the internet Ooh. where he opened the box and uh, sprayed them for the first time. The, the, the audio was pretty much unusable. Very funny to watch. He was reaching for tissue from his excitement of using the paint. Okay. Right. But it wasn't to, to mop up paint. I, I think I can say that. <laughs> yes, he's very, he's very, very excited on it. He challenged Outlaw Paints, actually, before they arrived, saying that if Outlaw Paints were as good as what he was seeing and what he was being told, he would get rid of his Tamiya range completely and replace it with Outlaw Paints. Which is a big, bold statement to make. So, yeah, that that's a great recommendation for Moss. Um, I also know, I spoke to him today, funny enough, he um, gave it 
to a, a fellow model maker, a bottle to a fellow model maker to, to, to let them try it. And this particular gentleman uses a particular brand, but he sprayed the outlaw paints and went, oh my God, this is just so much better. Oh. Two reactions from people that are super, super excited about um, about the product. So that that's really cool. Um, I've tried it and I, and I love it. I think it's great. I don't spray lacquers. It's not something I normally do. And this is a lacquer product. So there is an element to, for me for learning I've always said and said several times in the podcast that whatever product you use, you're going to have to learn how to use it. But I genuinely can say it's the first product I've actually picked up, poured into my airbrush, sprayed and gone, oh, that worked. I didn't need to do anything. There was no learning curve at all. Um, now, I will put a precursor on that because there are elements to uh, spraying models like uh, pre-shading and um, post-shading and all that sort of stuff that I will have to learn because I haven't done that yet. Um, but the the initial interaction with it is like, wow, I've tried eight different brands of paints, uh, finally settled on one brand because it was the one I understood and it was available locally and cheap. That was the Vallejo, wasn't it? That this was the model color. That's why I landed on. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other, the other products I had lots of problems and issues with. You know, my first experience was at Humbrol, um, and though people will tell you you can't, you cannot do airbrushing properly with Humbrol, I did manage to get some of the colors to come through really, really well, but some of them didn't. Um, but yeah, so going back to Outlaw, it really is a product in which I believe, truly from the bottom of my heart. If you've never used lacquers, you you haven't had that experience with airbrushing that we've had generally with other products, acrylics and other stuff. This particular product is something in which you can pour in your airbrush and spray and you can get it right first time, which I think is exceptionally amazing. I am going to try and arrange for some people that haven't done airbrushing and put that theory to the test. Oh, that'd be cool. In my heart, I, t I think is right, but until I've seen it for my own eyes with people that don't do airbrushing, um, I can't really make that claim. So organising all of that has been a long, long process. Trying to understand the product, trying to understand the market and all that sort of stuff. It's not really a lot of experience from my side, so it's been a, long, a lot of learning curves mm -hmm. to get around. Um, so that's taken up a lot of time. But we are getting to the point now where it's about to get onto a boat and be here in time for the launch, UK launch, which will be in November at Telford. That's super exciting. And then, yeah, so they're the models I've got. I've got one of the models on the bench here, which is, um, he says, he's a 148 HE, sorry, HE126B, which is a German reconnaissance airplane, uh -huh. um, which has gone out with something else that I do with on my website. Um, and... I'm using that as a test piece as well. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, they'll all be there at Telford so you can see how I got on with my first experiences. And the idea being, they may not look 100% professional, they might not look the bees and knees, but they are my first experiences with the paint and I want them to be there to say, um, that is my first experience, that's what, it, that's, that's what I got. Yeah. So hopefully, as long as they don't look like a complete dog's dinner, <laughs> Uh, and I can I can use that to explain my my thoughts on the product. So I'm very very conscious of the fact that I've been talking about the product for quite a while in bits and pieces through in, in different mediums, um, and I made it very clear that I hadn't physically t tried it, so I couldn't really jump up and down about it. But I am super excited to have the opportunity that's been given to me yeah. uh, and be a part of of it. Um, so yeah, it's super exciting. And one other thing I will say, we will also on the table, it could be a crazy, crazy weekend. We also, I've also been in communication with another paint manufacturer that's based in the UK that is not lacquer, it is acrylic. Um, and I'm super excited, absolutely over the moon, the fact that they're going to join me at the table as well. I've got the two products there, which were our new products to the, the modeling community that will be at Telford. Um, some may have seen the UK one around, but it's uh, certainly not in our uh, realm of the of the modeling world. So, Are we uh, not allowed to talk about what it is yet? I know, I'm, I'm just about to. Ooh, exclusive. I'm privileged 
is the right word. I'm privileged to say that Two Thin Coats will be with me at Telford. We will be selling it, demonstrating it. And I have the joy of having Duncan Rhodes with us. Uh, we've got a young gentleman who is a studio painter called Sam, uh, but he's also a scale model maker. So he knows how to apply this particular paint in the fashion that we would. And obviously, Two Thin Coats is a product that's aimed more at the, the, the Warhammer sort of guys. That's where they're known. But it can transfer over, obviously, to the models and stuff that we make. So, so yeah, super excited. We're going to have um, Peter, Sam and Duncan there telling everyone about the product myself and some other guys talking about the, the outlaw paints and sprue box and it's gonna be fantastic to have duncan rose there demonstrating his paints on your table ah <laughs> oh, do you know what i i can honestly tell you i am so blown away they've been absolutely fantastic and and it all comes down to the fact we had a conversation with peter obviously and i just happened to mention oh will you be at telford to which they said, well, no one's invited us. It's like, well, uh, as it happens, I'd like to invite you. And it's gone from there. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm super excited about it. it. It's just, again, another fantastic opportunity to bring something different, which is, which is the ethos of what I yeah. try and do. I'm not the average go-to place to go and buy your models. I do try and put a different spin on it. Uh, and, and, it's, and for me personally, it's very much linked to what I do on the Facebook and, and the YouTube and uh, and pulling that all together to make more of a community. I mean, if I had the money, don't get me wrong, I haven't, but if I had the money, I would open a model shop tomorrow, but it wouldn't be a model shop, it would be a venue. You'd want to come to this venue to make your models. That's how my mindset is with my approach. So, One day, I'll be able to take you down a place in Warminster called Factorum, which is a wargaming mecca. It's a wargaming venue, mm -hmm. like you were talking about. And you can make your stuff, make your models, uh, build your things, and you can play with them and everything else. You play the games and stuff. Uh, but the atmosphere yeah. there is just awesome. And the guy who set it up, I remember chatting to him, he said, I'm going to retire. What kind of place do I want to retire in? And so he just made somewhere really cool and then sells stuff and invites people in and, it, and it charges very little money to, for people to rent the table. It's great fun. I mean, that would be my my goal, if I'm honest. If, you know, if I could, I would tomorrow. Stuff here is very, very busy because we're running around. I say we because it isn't just me. There are other people. Well, no wonder you've been unable to do a podcast if you've been sorting out the stocking and distribution of two separate paint manufacturers. And and it's not just that as well. It's obviously the, the, the other stuff that I do on the, uh, the website with the inspiration boxes and all that sort of stuff. They'll all be there as well. So... It's three different avenues to put on one table. Oh, plus your your regular day job. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My wife isn't very impressed. I gotta be honest. Oh, you've got a wife as well. Well, yeah, she's very good. She's un she's under a load of cardboard boxes at the moment. I'm just uh, I don't know. She's okay. Yeah. Does she like paint? <laughs> I hope so. It could be under the bed. I think. <laughs> oh dear. There is so much more to come in 2024 already. Plans are afoot. Uh, I wish you every single success with it, buddy. Thank you very much. I cannot wait for Telford this year. It is, I mean, you think you're busy, all right? I'm busy mm. <laughs> as well. I don't think I'm even going to see you. No. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really, really fun. Well, you've got, you got your thing going on, but we've also got the tarp build going on. Yeah. As well as this. Yeah. We we literally are going to be running around like blue ass flies, not knowing who we actually are for for the majority of the weekend. I think I might do it slightly differently this time. If you want to come see me, uh, if you want to have a, a meeting or something with me, then I will arrange to have it where I will be. If I leave the stand, like it happened last time, I leave the stand, no one can find me. No one knows where I am. I missed a couple of meetings that I should have had. So I, I will be static. <laughs> Glued to the spot. Oh, but my um, hotel. I'm in the same place as last time. Yeah, this year I'm not in a hotel. Oh, are you camping? Uh, no, I've I've gone for an Airbnb with several other people. Nice. And um, I've made sure one of them is a chef. So breakfast will be ready at six. Wow. Steve, if you're listening. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, it, but I'm super excited just by that, to be honest. Getting together with people I haven't seen for ages and being able to kick back. And uh, I mean, oh, don't get me wrong, we won't be waking up next to each other or anything like that. You won't have time for any shenanigans, mate. 
No, no, <laughs> no, I won't. It's going to be the highlight of the year in so many ways. Good. I, I would like you to have a Telford that makes up for the fact that you weren't there last year. Um, and you can splurge all over the place with your Telford backlog. The, the crazy part is, is that next, in 2024, it's going to be even more manic. So plan is, is to have Jason and the team over from Australia. <laughs> yeah, be fantastic. God help me. Exciting. Yeah, the future is golden, I think. It's just looking really, really cool. Yeah, so that's that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to? You've, you, what have you been doing on your bench? Enough of me. Well, yeah, C47's done. Saw the photograph of the Belford stuff. Awesome. Saw that we've been invited up there to have a look. Awesome. Mm-hmm. What have I been on the bench to? Well, uh, my daughter's been in here a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, she's built a couple of uh, little figures with me, you know, my little bolt action dudes, and loved it. But she's very scared of painting. She's not a wreck it. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was very interesting. So I need to bring her in here and go, right, we're painting it now. Here's a two-inch brush. You can't wreck it. No. <laughs> I've done my tarp build. Yes. I haven't completed the base, but the actual tank part of it is done. Mm-hmm. A- ARV uh, Centurion, mm-hmm. and it's covered in a tarp. I'm just showing James now. And it's going to go on a base you might recognize. Oh, yes. And it's going to sit there on that. And then I'm going to put some grass and stuff like that to make it look exactly like the Duxford one. Mm. I'm super happy with it. I'm, uh, I'm really, really happy with it. It looks, you know, just like the the photograph. Yeah, it does. Like, you know, um, I used tissue and PVA, very wet, light PVA. So it was real sticky kind of tissue mix I had. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> little strips and moving on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I put like, strips on stuff so, so that when I put the strips on, it made it look like there were seams. Mm. seemed to work um mm-hmm. and then i cut up little uh slithers of wire electrical wire and mm-hmm. just cut it really thinly so that i got them as eyelets uh, for the top elastic for the um rope mm. badly wrapped around like it is in the in the real thing and um that's it bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt yeah it's gonna stick it on a nice base and be done with it and move on mm-hmm. and then also I've been working on Mr. Han Solo, uh, your friend of mine, Ron Milne. We've been trying to do a sort of a group build, uh, building, painting Star Wars figures, large ones. So he's got the large Revel Mandalorian, and I've got this, what is an absolutely immense garden ornament of Han Solo. And it's uh, it's large. 14 inches tall, isn't it? Well, that's it's bigger than my head. Oh, okay. 20 inches tall. <laughs> It's bigger than my head. His face is bigger than my thumb. To Malcolm Hand. So if you remember, if you remember or have seen pictures of Malcolm, you'll know that his hands are um, incredibly large. They're about two two sizes of my hand. Yeah. So it's two of my hands high. Anyway, he's pretty big. I didn't realize how much bloody paint it's taking to get. Honestly, I've used I used uh, almost half a pot of my scale color um, seventy five birch color just to do an in his. Uh, his top there but um no he's coming along mm. very slowly but uh, but it's weird doing something so big i'm used to you know whipping out my little tiny little tiny brush for the for the facial features and stuff but i'm going to be you know looking out for the, the larger chunkier brushes to do his eyes and things i'm not, I'm not sure you're meant to use a roller with with that though in fairness i mean i know it's a lot it covers the area mm. quickly that's true well a nice bit of magnolia mm. slapped all over it <laughs> it's all the rage isn't it? yeah. <laughs> it's very strange working at a different size um, and I guess that's why people stick with their scales right it's because they know yeah it is how things work and how things are going to go together and all that sort of thing but yeah work at that size is, is very weird and I might do him up then give him a good strong varnish and stick him outside yeah why not because he might get nicked <laughs> that's why well possibly <laughs> or I might kick him over or we might football to the face <laughs> Football to the face, yeah, yeah. You might end up used as a, a goalpost or something. Mm, yeah, and probably not a good idea then. No, but you'll be happy to know I haven't painted the bottom. That's still un, unpainted. No, 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 I, I, I had noticed that. It's funny because Ron, uh, who's doing his Mandalorian, is purposely going to paint the underneath of his Mandalorian, including 
He's going to give the shoes treads. Uh-huh. He's going to give his boots and their, um, a colouring and a dirty and a weathering to the bottom of the boots, even though he is standing on something. Mm-hmm. And he's doing that out of spite. Yes. You, you see, that the, the thing is with that, right? Okay, so if you painted the bottom of your garden ornament mm. and stuck him outside mm. and the wind blew him over, mm. it would prevent him from getting cold because he's got that layer on, you see. <laughs> well, yes, I guess you have a, an argument for varnishing the underneath. <laughs> yeah, I'm sold on that one, mate. Stop the worms <laughs> getting in. Right? But no woodlouse is going to give... Two shits that is not painted, honestly. <laughs> Hang on. Whoa. All that you've just isolated, all the wood lice out there going. Well, actually, no. I quite like having curtains and a right colour wall. Thank you very much. I, th- I thought you were going to say, how dare you call judges wood lice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't want to go in there. But you have, so it's all right. <laughs> Controversy. Again. I got out the, the the space shuttle because on the live show that we do, we do um, sprue or false. Mm-hmm. And the, the one I had was uh, I used the space shuttle sprues for mine. Mm. It, it was difficult because there's, there's an astronaut in the sprue and there's also loads of wheels. So I was like, well, what the hell is that? Anyway, it was 747 and the space shuttle that I need to do. Um, and I've got that out currently. So might start working on that at some point. Mm. Once the tarp's done, the hind solo's done, then I've, I don't have any other group builds that I'm supposed to be joining. I don't have any more projects lined up. So I, yeah. Someone's screaming at me going, you promised you'd do the... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking behind you at the shelf and thinking, well... Don't do that. That's a load of projects lined up, surely. No, don't do not do that because there are lots of projects. <laughs> Every single one of them has got an idea behind it. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but the space shuttle was on that shelf too so that's basically what you're telling me is the box is resisting going back on the shelf yeah that, that's what i'm telling you i uh, gotcha it's going to be a big project i've just noticed ray's panel line oh it's gonna be a really big project i'm gonna base it up and make it look like the one at stansted it's gonna be good i'm gonna get some 144 scale people Another little project in which I, well, I say I'm doing, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm handing to my father. Oh. He's, um, he's going to make me a spray booth. Oh, right. Oh, I, I didn't you talk about that a while back? Isn't that an idea yeah, you've had ages and ages ago, yeah. So um, I finally found the bits that I need, and basically he, he, um, he doesn't fully know this because we had a, a very quick chat. <laughs> Does he listen to this podcast? Oh, probably not. No, he's got much better things to do. He's going to make it out of marine ply for me. And then what we what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it a vinyl. But the, the way it will be designed is that the, the bits that you put on when you're spraying to stop overspraying all that stuff onto other things hmm. will be something you hook into the, the base unit and hook uh-huh. off when you don't want it. So oh, okay. it, it will free up a big part of my side because the spray booth will be just over two times the size of what I've got now. Mm, big projects coming up, huh? That's Well, yeah, that's the thing. I've got quite a few large airplanes yeah. I want to do, and I don't have the, the booth capacity. That should be in, hopefully, by the end of the year as well. Uh, that'll, that'll mean a slight reorganisation in here anyway. Oh, it is exciting this year. It really is. Spray booth updates. Talking about exciting. Oh, yeah. Go on, then. Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to start... <laughs> there you go jingle with that um <laughs> so yes yeah, so the mooseroo cup build um is on route i'm told so yes i oh i see i said that what the fo- what's the photograph you sent me then you sent me a picture of an envelope in a box, I think. Didn't you? So, yeah, basically I posted up on the Facebook page where we don't often put up other nonsense. I put a picture of the box that I saw from IPMS Hamilton saying that it was en route. Yeah. And challenged the listeners, actually, to do what I was doing, which was basically trying to measure the box and figure out the depth and the width and all that and trying to figure out what might be in it. Oh, I didn't even see that. Is that on Just Making Conversation Facebook? It certainly is, yeah. What is wrong with me? 
I really should tune into that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, if you if you <laughs> like the page. Oh, damn. Yeah, there's always something I've got to do. All right, fine. But yeah, so that that's on route. I, I, I don't know what it is. I've got no idea. Were there any guesses? I have made a bold statement. I think it's something floaty. Right. Now, I have actually been in communication with Callum, who is from the Micro Machines podcast team. Yep. And he is doing it this year. So we have new people joining us in in the in the build, which is super exciting. Are you going to make a, like a little WhatsApp group or something? I think we will be having a chat group, a, a Discord yeah. group, um, a Facebook group, a YouTube channel, and God knows <laughs> what else, probably. <laughs> but yeah, anything that gives me a helping hand would be wonderful. No subtle hint involved to any other podcasters that might be listening. That would be against the rules, wouldn't it, surely? Well, no, because we're not getting physical help. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, you're talking about help with setting up some sort of social media. I'm not inviting them all around my house. Oh, God, no. Mm. Don't want to give any secrets away. We'll chat, no mm. doubt, about when the kit comes and uh, any difficulties we might find to help each other out in that respect. But other than that, we won't bend the rules, of course. But um, Well, when when we did the the last Moose Roo, it was we had a little chat group talking about how we're getting on and everything else. It was awesome. It made the, the process so much more of an event. You know, more exciting. Yeah, it was community. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. But yeah, so Callum, Callum messaged me today, funny enough, and said, that, um, uh, what did I think it was? And I said, I haven't got a clue, but I'm hoping it's something floaty because that's sort of my thinking, to which he was a little bit nervous over. Now, floating. <laughs> now, you're listening to Just Making Conversation, obviously. So you can imagine <laughs> floating could mean anything. A floating turd? Is that what you're going with? It could be right. anything, uh, because that popped into my head today. So forgive me for, for saying it, but hopefully it's not um, airfix seeking. Because <laughs> uh, in one seventy second, I might just have a meltdown. <laughs> hey, careful. <laughs> I'm not being disrespectful. It's just that my experience with a certain kit has been quite... It did. Uh, it really got me. But anyway. It's a notoriously it's like, difficult kit. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it's notorious, but I, I know for a fact that um, I got PE for it because I really wanted to go to town because I love the Sea King. When I got the, the mismolded kit out with gaps and God knows what else going on with it, um, I just cried for weeks. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's probably the only kit that I've known for moaning about. Okay. It's one of those things. It, at the end of the day, it's a model kit. We're model makers. We can get around anything if we put our mind to it, but that just did me. Yeah. At the time. So, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please, if you've got an idea or, or, or a thought or what you maybe, maybe what you think we should be challenged to would be interesting. Yeah. Let us know. There, there wasn't any comments other than one from Gary Morris who said uh, he hopes it's not a C47. <laughs> oh, imagine if it was. Oh. If it is, bonus, because I've got. <laughs> Everything that I possibly need to get that thing done. <laughs> be done in five minutes. <laughs> it would just be like deja vu. Yeah, deja vu. Yeah. Well, let's see. It might be a helicopter. Helicopters are in these days. They're big. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't know. And uh, this will sound horrible. I don't care what it is. I love the idea of the challenge. And I'm so I'm certain that, that when I open it, I go, well, I didn't think it would be that. Or, and it's going to be something I'd, I've probably not seen before or or have my hands around before, so it's going to be fun. It's a white box. It's, there's no clues on the box whatsoever. Is it um like a box that's in a box? Or I'm going to have to look at this post, aren't I, to find out what this pet box is. Well, see, now, this is the thing, because obviously, looking at the box, it does look like a postal box. And I'm looking at the picture right now. It does say, however, on the box, do not open before 08-01. So... I'm wondering, is that the first of the eighth, or is that the eighth of the first? Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I, I am assuming then it's Canadian date and not UK date, so that will be the eighth of January. Yeah. But yeah, so Duncan, um, Duncan did the post. Duncan Young from um, IPMS Hamilton. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, I found it. He's been very crafty with his picture. However, however, I do know for a fact that it's probably a little bit deeper than it looks. And now the reason I know that is because I've had that picture full blown and I've gone over it like, like, like those of sorts. I've got the shadows all mapped out. I've got the, the tab that's on the front all mapped out. I got a fairly reasonable idea how big that box is. Oh, because the tab at the front. 
Uh, there's a little tab at the front. It's quite wide, isn't it? It is quite wide, but also if you look at the shadow on the right hand side, now guys, you're going to have to go to the web <laughs> uh, to the Facebook page to be able to understand what we're talking about. There's a shadow on the top right hand corner. I reckon that's a, that's a bit of a clue on how tall that box is. Maybe, maybe, maybe the size of that box. That's an A4 piece of paper at an angle on top. Right. Mm-hmm. So the size of that box is a good 30 centimetres wide. By 30 centimetres, probably. 30 centimetres square. Yeah. All right. What model kits come in square boxes? Well, this is what maybe lead me to the postal box. So it could be, it could be a figure in the middle stuffed with bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah, it could. It could be a ship right across the middle of it. It could. And also, the other, the other clue that I saw was a small indentation on the top left-hand corner as well. Just by the by the letter, so ah uh, right, yeah, yeah. So there are clues, and if you look at if you if you stare at the picture long enough, okay, you can see an outline of a box within a box. All right. <laughs> no, no, because look, if you if you look right, okay, so I'll, I'll walk you through it. So if you go just just before the before, where the letters at an angle, uh-huh. where the black line finishes on the letter. Right on the left hand side, there is a definitive line that runs okay. across the box, and you can follow that line across the other side of the box. And then there's about I would suggest to you about a two centimeter gap mm. on the each side running up the box. But the only thing that doesn't give it away is that I can't see a line at the top of the box. So I reckon that basically. That bit below the letter is packing. The bit on the sides are packing, and the bit at the back isn't. Mm. So that'll be a relatively small box then. Yes. Or this box is actually about two feet deep and you're going to build a 148 submarine and you're looking at the end of the box. <laughs> a scientific study of the photo, the grain of the table that is sat on is a one-to-one grain, okay? And it's not that far away from the top. No, that's true. It's not far away. So that gives you some depth perception. The tab adds to that depth perception. And let's face it, it's probably just a pizza. <laughs> there is a clue in there. It does say airfix, top right. Oh, no. Seeking, here we go. Yeah, airfix sufficient postage, it says. Or does that, <laughs> does that say affix? No, it does say affix. Never mind. <laughs> it says, I'm assuming also it says United Kingdom across the middle. Though. I mean, we could make a whole podcast about looking at a box <laughs> and figuring out what the contents is and find out that it's just empty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the mystery build is 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 coming to a, a bench near me. So yeah, super excited. I can't wait. And uh, I know the guys at uh, Global Lightspeed have done a, a fantastic job. And thank you so much again for your support. Yeah. In this uh, fine venture that you have uh, put us through. And if it is a seeking, I will be sending you a private message. No, I've not heard you um, put up so much of a a fight about a chopper before honestly oh no i love a chopper don't get me wrong i do love a chopper a whirly bird rotary wing yeah well oh rotary now that would be exciting oh you yes mm. 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 well we'll find out soon won't we yeah we will i don't think they'll let me go anywhere near um a gundam again so uh, i'm fairly certain it won't be that I'm assuming that they would not go go through something they've done previously or something else. So. Yeah, I don't. I, I I think I upset too many people with a Gundam. So <laughs> you upset me, certainly. <laughs> well, so we talked about the Moose Road. We talked about uh, what you've been up to. Talked about what I've been up to. The interviews we had lined up will be re-lined up, um, so we will be doing those, and they will be coming out soon. When you listen to this, obviously you've already seen the post on the Facebook page. We're asking for your questions for our guests. We will endeavour to ask them if we if we get them in time. Because of the traffic jams and constant issues that we've been having of late, our schedule is obviously off. We will just be releasing on a Monday when, when we've done the uh, podcast, and it may be every other week it might be every three weeks might be four depends mm. but what we will do or endeavor to do is to put a post up to tell you when it's coming yeah so bear with us uh, obviously we're very busy at the moment we don't want to make excuses and put sorry posts up all the time because that's not fun is it so but yeah we we will get back to a routine but obviously our routine that we had has gone for now <laughs> it's gone up the up the kyber um but thank you for the people who did say doesn't matter Come back when you're ready. We'll be waiting. You know, that was nice. 
Yes. It's always always good to get your support. And in fact, actually, do you know what? As, we, as we're still recording, Neil said, Boo, hurry up, please. Oh, hang on. No, that wasn't very supportive. <laughs> he did put a smiley face. Yeah, there were smiley faces. Yeah. Benedetto said, keep me entertained at work with that fantastic back catalogue of episodes. So no need to apologise by all means. There we go. So that's a good idea. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> listen to them all again yes david said uh good things are always worth waiting for big thumbs up thank you very much neil just had to put another post in saying it's not a race absolutely not mm. uh william he said always a happy moment when i see a new episode posted i look forward to the next one too adam also said in your own time gentlemen that's kind harriet said quality not quantity and frank said that he'll be waiting so um i'm um, but I think it's I think it's good to highlight the fact that uh, you're there to support us. Thank you for that. Nice to have some support. As my mother used to say, good support always stops them hanging around your knees. Nice. Dude. I was trying to have a moment when you were talking about your grandma's tits. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> So now we've confirmed that we're still alive and missing our guests. We are always busy in the background, but we could be much more busier with your help. So put your thinking caps on and let us know what dark corners of the hobby do you think we should reach into in our next podcast? Maybe there is something you really want the inside scoop on. Where should people send those uh, ideas to? Because I know we've got Facebook and Instagram and emails. Put a comment in the in the Facebook post tell us a subject send us an email if you wish you could even go full out go into the cafe buy yourself a coffee and us at the same time and leave us a message with your name i'm sure people have asked us to do subjects in the past i mean oh that's a good idea and we wrote it down somewhere and completely forgotten we won't ignore it on it well we didn't we did the, the youtube one didn't we? yeah we did yeah, we did the car one and we did and the railway mm, that's true see and we were proactive we didn't we didn't think well, that'd be good for 2026 <laughs> we, we we got on with it so yeah drop us drop us some ideas i'm sure there's something on there that uh, you've not heard anywhere else or you think we can put a slight slant on it for your entertainment yeah, yeah okay there we go come up with something uh because we're too lazy and we haven't come up with anything <laughs> Otherwise, it'd just be, ah, catch up episode number 60. So, what colour is your bathroom? <laughs> Do you know any plumbers that can put a sink back on a wall? Are you upset at the price of stamps? <laughs> is your local railway station ticket office shutting? Don't get me started. You've been listening to Just Making Conversation with James Skiffins and Malcolm Chard. Follow us on Facebook, where we very rarely post photos, updates, or anything. Find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and all those others. Let us know what you are just making and what your thoughts are on the conversation in this episode or any other episode. Thank you to the following supporters from buymeacoffee.com forward slash JMC podcast. Here we go. Johan Frenson, Mike Peepstucker, Mike Shelley, Mark Harrit, Elliot Capredi, Adam, Kieran Drusser Legume, Craig Nichols, Elliot Robert Lane, Dean Avanum, Bild and Modekit. You never found out who that was, did we? No. Whoever you are, I love you. Callum from Micro Machines Podcasts, Paint All the Minis, Peter, Brad Warren, Tim Black Rifle, John. Julian Chuck, Mark Becker, Wahi, Simon, the Jersey Gent, Steve Lee, Costas, Mark Ray, Neil Twice, Mike, Robert, Andrew, Drew, John, Mike, Jeff, Rich, Lorden, and seven others. <laughs> if you do show your support, leave your name so we can paint the roll of honour on the towel of the next episode. Goodbye. Goodbye. Till we meet again. our latest 
Facebook post, we put up a picture of a waveform. Um, it came from James's track while we were recording the last episode. <laughs> Looks a bit interesting. What is it? What's the sound, word, or noise? Yeah, if you guessed it on the post, then you want to know what it sounds like, don't you? So here we go. I'm going to play it for you right now. Thanks very much for listening. See you soon.